The reason why I felt so strongly that we could get into this discussion and have a difference as a business is we are a company that has customers that are all different political beliefs, all different states in the country. And I just don't think this is a political issue anymore. I think it is a human issue. You're listening to the Almost 30 Podcast, a lifestyle podcast hosted by Krista Williams and Lindsay Simsek. Tune in for a new episode every Tuesday to hear our honest conversations about topics like wellness, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and self-development with guests who are really smart, really inspirational, and really fucking funny. (laughs) It's real, it's raw, and it's unfiltered. Inspired by our transition from our 20s to our 30s, we realized it's so much more than that. Our mission is to provide you with the tools, guidance, and motivation to help you navigate any transitions in your life and propel your personal growth. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Almost 30 Podcast. Here we go. Hi. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Almost 30 Podcast. If you're new, welcome to the show. I did my vocal (laughs) exercises before this. You are on. So I'm ready to go. Part of... uh, So we also do a program (laughs) called Your Podcast Pro. Uh And it helps podcasters start a podcast, market a podcast, launch a podcast, whatever. Yourpodcastpro.com. And we're in the (laughs) course and we have a session on voice and vocal Mm -hmm. exercises. So I was doing mine. Dude, the voice is so important. So important. As you all know, listening to us, whether you... Hate it or love it. Totally. You know, it's an important part. <laughs> important part of any show. I mean, when I listen to podcasts, it's either... It's one of the top five things that pull me in or push me away. So... But also, it, you know, it makes you think about the voice you're using, you know, in co- conversations one-on-one with certain people or expressing yourself maybe in a meeting or... I don't know. It's just, it, it's important, and I don't think we think enough about it. And, and what affects it? You know, what affects our our tone when we pitch up? We've talked about this a little bit on the podcast, especially with Stuart Pierce. But it's it's very interesting in how that vibration can either resonate or what's the opposite of resonate? Dissonate. Just kidding. I don't know. Uh, I think- w- with someone, you know? Yeah. Some people find it soothing and others will be like, ugh. I know. It's interesting. Yeah. I just can tell too when I'm fully present through my voice and when I'm being thoughtful and intentional. Yes. Slower, deeper, you know, all of that. Completely. There's been something I want to talk about and that's the horseshoe over your door. Oh, you want to know more about it? Lindsay has a, a new addition to the apartment. Is she finds she finds every little nook and cranny to decorate. Wait, who and there's gave a horse me show. That? Shoot. Is it is it spiritual? It's a gift. It's um Does it mean something? Yes. Oh, it's from um Dude. What? Horses keeps coming up today. Yo, today is yeah, I was gonna, I've heard about horses four, four times. times today. Um, it's from a rider of mine, actually. Mm. She's so sweet. I um, love it. So, so when I left Soul Cycle. I love it. Um she, you know, it's obviously good luck, mm-hmm. many blessings. So it was, it was nice. It's sweet. It's really sweet. I just you keep like looking it? at it. But I'm I like, kept looking at new. it in my drawer uh, and I was like, where the hell? And yeah. you're supposed to put it over I a like doorway it. so that it kind of like blesses people who come in. I love it. You don't love it because you're smiling. I love it. You're I just, smiling and laughing. I keep looking at it. And okay. I just am like, oh, it's just cute to think about you being like, this is my little horseshoe. I'm going to put it over You should have seen me trying to get it up there. I know. <laughs> I don't have a man in here to hang hang up. But I did it myself. Me and Justin don't even have a man. We have a handy person. (laughs) Justin's like, hey, hey, can't can't you call the handyman? We both have a man. And his (laughs) name is not Justin. (laughs) Oh, man. Man, this one is a special episode this week. It is. Got us really thinking about... Got me thinking a lot about how we structure Almost 30, how we want to structure Almost 30 in 2019 and 2020 and how I want to think thoughtfully about how we're going to give back or how we're going to structure our business so that we have a charitable element to it at all times. You know, we we have organized fundraisers. We've donated money. We just donated, you know, $300 last month. We've donated money to other charities throughout the year. 
um, with our events, we donate a lot of money, but I really want to find a group, a foundation, a cause that we can really attach ourselves to and kind of grow and evolve with. Yeah. And, and two, thinking about how our community, because they are involved with Almost 30, they can become activists by way of just being associated with Almost 30 and feel empowered and inspired to do more good. So our guest today, Blake Mykoski, is the founder of Tom's and he did that so beautifully with his one-to-one model um, for every pair of shoes bought. A pair of shoes was donated to a child in need. And there are different branches of the Tom's brand. So for example, the Tom's eyewear purchase uh, that you make helps restore sight to an individual through sight-saving surgery. If you are at the cafe at various Tom's locations, that will support water systems in seven countries for those that are needing safe water. Um, the Tom's bags are helping women who are giving birth in areas that don't have the resources they need to safely give birth. The Tom's High Road Backpack uh, will provide the training of school staff and crisis counselors to help prevent and respond to instances of bullying. And what we all know, if you know the Tom's brand, for every shoe or a pair of shoes bought, a pair will be given to a child in need of shoes. Yeah. It's such a beautiful concept. And I remember when Tom's came on the scene a few years ago, I bought my Tom's and it felt really good to support someone, but I hadn't really ever, I hadn't ever thought about conscious capitalism. And I haven't thought about the way that corporations and how we spend our money could make an impact on the world. You know, something as simple as shoes, which you are already buying, spending that dollars, those dollars with Tom's could make a difference. So it made it really easy for consumers. And then it also made an impact. And, um, you know, growing up, I think that there was the paradigm of having money was bad, or there wasn't ever a connection made between corporations and companies giving back. You know, there was some philanthropic opportunities or things that were done, but it never was expected of them. And it was really just seen as businesses make money and then people give money. But it wasn't... I don't know. That wasn't connected at all. So for him to kind of start this wave and create such such a stand in the space has been such a beautiful thing to see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Today, I'm... I'm, it's kind of freaking me out. I've been like really lost for words lately. Oh, I think you're flowing. No, not really. Cause I know what I want to say right now and it's not really coming the way that I want to. So <laughs> our community, it's a little frustrating. Us. Thanks guys. I feel you there. I mean, that's basically me 95% of it's the time. Frustrating. No, but I also wanted to mention that if you uh, go on to toms.com right now, um, what they're doing at Tom's is evolving the giving model. So we mentioned kind of what they've been doing for the last five or six years, but um, they are now committed to giving resources to the causes of our time. Um, So they kicked this initiative off. Quite recently, you saw Blake on the Jimmy Fallon show and they have donated $5 million to end gun violence, which is the most money ever donated by an organization uh, for a cause like this. So you can go on to toms.com, be a part of this initiative. And they created this new technology that within 30 seconds, you can send a postcard to your representative that will help pass universal background checks for gun purchases. Yeah. So it's really great. In this interview, Blake explains what universal background checks are. And it's pretty simple. So it's making sure that, you know, people like convicted felons don't have access to buy guns and just getting tighter on purchasing guns. It's, you know, not hard and fast. And it applies to basically everyone, um, whether you're Democrat, Republican, it's basically a human thing. Um, So on Wednesday, Tom's announced that they're doing an end gun violence together tour, which is a multi-city event to deliver more than 700,000 postcards, which now is way more. It's Mm -hmm. probably going to be a million when they get there to Congress in support of universal background checks. So they're going to be visiting various cities and they're going to be ending in Washington, D.C. on February 5th. And you can come support them. You can give your postcards. 
you can kind of do your thing to um, show that you believe too that there should be universal background checks, something that we support here at Almost 30. Um, So thank you to Blake. Truly, thank you for coming on and being so present for uh, paving the way as an entrepreneur that is building a business and the backbone of that business is giving back. You know, it's, it's really setting the standard for future entrepreneurs and slowly but surely, hopefully sooner rather than later, I think it's happening quite quickly because they're taking your lead. Um, it's going to change the world. Yeah. Agreed. And for anyone in Almost 30 in our community, would love to hear your ideas or suggestions, or if you are a business, a small business, if you're part of a business that does a great job about giving back of supporting the community of being more human, uh, please give us your suggestions. We'd love to start a conversation about how Almost 30 can get involved more in a model like something that Blake is doing or Mm -hmm. whatever the model may be, finding opportunities for us to really give back some of the amazing energy and love that we receive from you on a daily basis would be amazing. So, all right. Enjoy this episode. Uh, You can chat about it in the secret Facebook group. If you're not a part of the Facebook group, you can just search on Facebook, Secret Almost 30 Podcast Group. And we will see you on the other side for a review of the week. We appreciate your love, support, We appreciate you subscribing to the show, for sharing the show with your friends. It means everything. Yeah. And we'll see you on February 9th for our event with Alexandra Roxo at Sage Wellness. You can go to our website to get tickets. It's going to be a day-long workshop about tapping into your feminine and it will be amazing. So Mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing you there. Love you. So when we start planning almost 30 events like we did last year on tour and like we're doing for our 2019 global tour, uh, one of the first things we do is make sure we have Spindrift sparkling water on deck, stocked, stocked for everyone. And everyone loves it to see people's faces when they try it for the first time on tour. My favorite flavors right now, I'll give you a little rundown. Orange mango, huge fan. So refreshing, really unique flavor. And of course, grapefruit, tried and true. I always have it in my fridge for when I'm craving a drink that's light, delicious, and refreshing. Also digging the half and half. It's like an Arnold Palmer. Love it with a little sparkle. So good. And what we love about Spindrift is that it's made with real squeezed fruit. So the best part about it is the real fruit. So you can actually see it if you pour it out in a glass. It has color because, hey, everybody, real fruit has color and it's low sugar, but the sugar is from the real fruit. There are no artificial sweeteners, added sugars, or natural flavors in Spindrift. So you don't have to worry about any of that. It is made with real simple ingredients and we just love them so much. So if you try Spindrift, you can go to spindriftfresh.com and use our code ALMOST30 for 15% off your first order. So that's spindriftfresh.com. Use our code ALMOST30 for 15% off your first order. So we're just really excited to have you. We are huge fans and um, have just admired you for a long time now. So this is a dream. Yeah, Let's truly. <laughs> I, heard you I went to your website earlier today and it was fun. We're, I we're really, goons. Uh, we're goonies. Um, yeah, it's really <laughs> great. You. Now that there was definitely like a really good attitude and positivity, you know, in your community. And so I was like, oh, this is going to be really fun. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I heard you on... Lewis Howes recently and then a long time ago. And I'll never forget it. I would never believe that, you know, at that time I'd be here talking to you today on Almost 30. So we are so excited. Our conscious, loving community is pumped to hear about your story and what you're working on right now, especially. Great. Yeah. And we just jump right in. Everything is really uh, casual and we let it flow wherever it's meant to flow. So, but for those who don't know your story, we would love to kind of talk about how Tom started and the why behind Tom's. Sure. So uh, Tom started 12 years ago when I was uh, traveling in Argentina and I was uh, actually down there learning to play polo of all things. Uh, so mm-hmm. I grew up in Texas riding horses, but had never played polo. I had seen a few polo matches and thought um, it was pretty interesting and I had this uh, tradition that I did every year 
in January where I'd go to a place I'd never been before and learn something that I had never learned before. And uh, the reason I did that was I started my first company when I was 18 years old and I grew up really fast. Um, people always said I was the oldest 20 year old they ever met. Uh, and now people say I'm one of the younger 40 year olds they know. Uh, <laughs> I did it in reverse. Like I literally kind of sacrificed my 20s to be an entrepreneur and to be working this crazy amount of hours and and not doing the fun things that most people are doing in college instead of uh instead of you know being at the bars or or you know going to the tailgate parties and doing the normal things that college students are doing i was actually doing the laundry of all the students uh at my school because i started a laundry business and uh and so so basically i recognized that i was working like a crazy amount in my 20s starting these businesses um, I loved it, but I would start to get burnt out kind of towards the end of every year. So I took January off every year. So no matter what I was doing with my company, whatever company I was running or starting, I had a, I, I basically did everything I could to outsource or put there or delegate in January. And I would go somewhere uh, and learn something new. And so this year, I decided to go to Argentina and learn to play polo, of all things. And uh, when I was down there, I saw I was traveling between Buenos Aires and then, uh, you know, kind of outside of town about an hour and a half. And I would have to drive through some very impoverished neighborhoods uh, to get to the farms where the horses and the polo was. And I saw many kids on the street, you know, not wearing uh, any shoes, seeing you know, and And it just kind of broke my heart. And it, and it really just I saw like really intense poverty. Um, and so after seeing this for a couple of weeks. I had a very serendipitous encounter where I met these these three women in a bar, um, and they were talking about it was a wine bar in Buenos Aires. They were talking about the fact that um, they were doing volunteer work in Argentina, and they were doing specifically something called a shoe drive. And they were going around collecting slightly used shoes from wealthy families uh, in Buenos Aires, and they were going to give them to kids in these villages that I've been driving through that did not have shoes that needed shoes to go to school. And I was just so impressed by the fact that they were spending their vacation down there to volunteer and to help kids get shoes. And so I offered to, to help distribute the shoes on this Saturday that was coming up when they were going to do it. And not knowing anything about this, had never done any type of volunteer work before. Um, you know, and so this was all very foreign to me. And, uh, but I thought it sounded like a fun experience and adventure. And so I signed up and I went to this this village, Los Pilitonis, with these women. And I experienced just the greatest joy in the world, like seeing these kids so excited to get a pair of shoes, not even a new pair of shoes, really, really touched me. Their parents were so thankful. We played and we jumped rope with the kids. We played soccer with the kids. We spent the whole day with them after we gave them their shoes. And I remember leaving that day saying that was the best day of my, my vacation. Like that was more fulfilling. Like I felt great. and. Um, and I really, really was uh, excited about the experience. And that night, I had dinner with my polo coach uh, and told him about it. And, and he listened very intently and he was very impressed that I spent my day doing that, helping people in his country. Um, and he knew very well about these kids and this, this, this kind of part of town. Um, but then he said, well, what's going to happen when they need their next pair of shoes? And that single question is what led to the creation of Tom's because I realized that being a nonprofit and having donations was not really a sustainable way to keep these kids getting shoes because in three to four months, they would either grow out or wear out of these shoes and they would need another pair. And so that led to the idea that I had the next morning when I was writing my journal that instead of looking to nonprofits and charity to solve society's problems, why not look to entrepreneurship? At this point, I had started four other companies. I loved being an entrepreneur. I loved starting things and creating things to solve problems, usually commercial problems, but why not do it for a societal problem like kids don't have shoes? And so that's when I came up with the idea of starting a shoe company where its purpose would be every time it sells a pair of shoes, it would give a pair away. I called it one for one because I thought that's the easiest way to describe it. You know, there was no percentages, there was no formulas, just totally transparent. You buy a pair of shoes that you want, and you help someone get a pair of shoes that they need. And I started, you know, finding some people uh, in Argentina that could make this 
very unique pair of shoes that a lot of people wore down there called the Abregata. And I made 250 pairs. I brought them back to LA and got my friends and sister and girlfriends to buy the first pairs. Um, and that's what kind of, you know, started this idea that became Tom's. Wow. And so for you, like, uh, you know, when I was 20, I was definitely doing, I wasn't doing anything close to what you were doing. Where did this drive for entrepreneurship come from? And this like thoughtful desire to always learn and grow at such a, an age where, you know, the people that I was around in the environments that I was in being from the Midwest were not contributing to us wanting to grow personally or wanting to set out and do something different like you were doing at such a young age. Sure. I think it all comes from um, when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I recognized that I had a great gift for playing tennis. And I was one of the better tennis players in the country. And then I went, um, I lived at a tennis academy and I spent my whole, you know, kind of, you know, um, youth really focused on trying to become a professional tennis player. And I ended up having an injury in college, which led to the idea to start the laundry business because I was on crutches and I couldn't carry my laundry down. And starting the laundry business became my first entrepreneurial venture. And I remember like it was yesterday, I had had this laundry business going for about six months. We had some customers. And someone said, I said, man, you're a young entrepreneur. And I didn't know what the word entrepreneur meant. I literally had to go to the dictionary. And <laughs> you're like, I know. <laughs> <E-M>. and, uh, <laughs> like, oh, wow. Like, that's really cool. Like, you know, like that makes sense. And I recognize that every ounce of discipline and self-reliance and drive and everything I learned playing tennis at such a high level really translated competitiveness to being an entrepreneur and starting a business, you know? Um, And so, you know, that's, I think what I, I quickly, you know, channeled all that energy of wanting to be a professional tennis player to wanting to be a great entrepreneur. And then because I was a 19 year old entrepreneur with like 40 employees, which was very rare, um, especially back then, I would naturally have these more established entrepreneurs in Dallas, Texas, like, like want to mentor me and like take me to dinner. And these people were really successful. And what I recognize is people who made millions, even billions of dollars, the thing that they all talked about the most when I played golf with them or went to lunch with them or whatever was their philanthropy. There was always that what they talked about. They always talked about how they were using their, their, their resources to make a difference in the world. And that and these guys were guys, and there were some women too, they were mainly in their you know, 60s and 70s at this point. And that's why they had the time to mentor a 19-year-old, right? And so, but they always talked about this idea of like, what their success has allowed them to do was to really make a difference in people's lives. And so at a very early age, my whole, my whole mantra was, you know, God gave me these gifts to be a great entrepreneur, and I'm going to use those gifts to make as much money as humanly possible so that when I turn 60, I can give it all away. Like it was like, I mean, I remember like at, you guys are probably too young to have MySpace accounts. But oh, we did. <laughs> oh, you did. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm 42. No. So, yeah, uh, but, but, but if you remember of MySpace, when you had your profile, it had you write like a single sentence to like basically is the equivalent of like a profile picture, but it was a sentence about you or what you wanted to say about yourself. And I wrote in 2000, you know, four. So two years before I started Tom's on MySpace, you know, I am an entrepreneur. I will never be remembered for what I created, but what I gave away. And so even at as a 27 year old, I knew that my purpose in life was to make the world a better place. But I always thought I'd be 60 or 70 before I entered that phase of my life until I started Tom's. Mm -hmm. So you brought 250 shoes back to LA, started selling to your friends. What was like the response and the feeling because I mean, you're you're allowing customers to also be, you know, create their own karma in this way, and to be yeah. to give back, like in the moment when they buy, and for it to feel like this tangible. I don't know. It's just something so unique, and and I'm just curious as to what the response was, and kind of how you snowballed that so quickly. I mean, it was you know, in 2006. This idea was 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 really radical. Like people were like, "What? You're gonna like." give a pair of shoes like how do you make money like how is this a good idea like you know like are you really doing it you know it was like it was it was really it was really jolting to people 
actually. Um, and then, and then when they realized we were really serious and we showed them the videos on YouTube and like, this is what we're doing, then they were just so emotionally connected to this. So I always said, we didn't have customers, we had supporters because no one just bought a pair of Toms in the early days. They became an evangelist for what we were doing. You know, they were telling the stories to their friends. They were, you know, sharing it on Facebook. They were posting videos. They were, you know, wanting to come on giving trips with us. I mean, it was truly a a, a, a participatory act versus just a transactional. And because of that, that's why our business grew so fast. I mean, it, it's hard to believe now, um, but with no investors and basically no marketing budget, we went from zero to half a billion in sales in six years. I mean, like Casual. we broke every <laughs> single record in the history of the shoe business. Like wow. no company in shoe business anywhere in the world has ever grown that fast, especially with no investors and no marketing. And it was always because every customer got 20 more friends to be customers. And they did it with like the most like passion and joy you've ever seen. And that's what built Tom's into what I call a movement. I always say, we did not start a shoe company. We started a movement that sold a ton of shoes. And since then, I mean, we've now given, I mean, next year, we're going to hit the 100 millionth shoe given. So we've, we've given like 89 million shoes so far, which is just like really hard to wrap your head around. It's like, you know, a third of the country has gotten a pair of shoes from us, but all over the world. And, uh, and that's because you know, people really realized that this was a way that they could buy something that they wanted, something that was fashionable, comfortable, affordable, but also make a real tangible difference in someone's life. Yeah, that's and that's something, you know, that as I've, I guess, evolved or just educated myself more is thinking about where I'm spending my money. So being conscious about the dollars that I have. And I think that's what's so beautiful about Tom's is that you allow people to make an impact just by spending money on something that they would be buying already. So many of the women in our community are all about manifesting. They're all about manifestation. They want to create the most beautiful, vibrant, full life of their dreams. And the only answer that I have for questions when people ask how to manifest the person they love, how to manifest the dream job, how to manifest the dream career is to hook yourselves up with To Be Magnetic. Yeah, Lacey Phillips of... Uh founded to be magnetic because she is LA's and now the world's go-to for manifestation. And she's not about like the typical, you know, practices, what you would think the woo woo, where you're like, visualize, let me write it down. Let me just think positive thoughts. She really is helping us uh, to practice um, and normalize thoughts that go deep into your subconscious that really reprogram what you've learned from very young. Yeah. There's so much more to manifestation than what people think. And, you know, just kind of speaking it into existence or wanting something. There is the shadow work. There is um, figuring out how to authentically be aligned with yourself so that you can magnetically pull in everything that your soul and heart desires. So I just started Mm -hmm. Shadow. Uh, which is one of the workshops that you can do or one of the courses that you can do when you go to to tobemagnetic.com. And I am blown away. I didn't know that it would be so deep and so powerful. And to be honest, it's a little scary for me to face my shadow. Uh, But to really integrate yourself and to really love all parts of you, you need to recognize your shadow self. So the shadow work will help you to be more magnetic in all areas of your life. So that's the course that I am doing right now and really, really heavily into. Yeah. And I just did the um, partnership. So, you know, that also involves a lot of deep imaginings and what I found. And it's funny, like, the subconscious is so tricky. It's showing up every day, but I'm not realizing that the decisions I'm making or the way I'm talking about myself or others is really rooted in something that I don't even realize. And the deep imaginings and different meditations really help to um, untangle that. So if you'd like to try any of the To Be Magnetic workshops, you can use the code ALMOST30 for 10% off at tobemagnetic.com. So that's almost 30 for 10% off any workshop at tobemagnetic.com. Join our secret Facebook group. Let us know what workshops you're doing and how it's going. 
So I actually have been using Perfect Keto for six to eight months. Mm. I started using it um, actually when I was working at my full-time job. I would take it in the morning before my workout and I'd have a fasted workout and it would help me stay full and intermittent fast. So I used the Perfect Keto um, beta-hydroxybutylate salts, which are delicious. And then I would be full and focused until I had my first meal when I was intermittent fasting and I freaking loved it. So I'm so happy that we are working with them for almost 30. Yeah, it's great. I've been intermittent fasting as well. And to help me kind of come out of it, you know, midday, um, I love their Perfect Keto bar in particular. The almond butter brownie has been so good. So it's all natural ingredients. Which is crazy. That's the thing is like, I actually got it and I was like, oh, this is cool when I got Perfect Keto. But I was nervous because a lot of those products are fillers, additives, all that kind of stuff. But the best thing about Perfect Keto and the bars that you were just talking about the ingredients clean as hell they're clean which is crazy balanced keto macros and it only has three grams of net carbs which is which is great so if you'd like to try perfect keto for 27 percent off site-wide you can visit perfectketocom slash almost 30 and enter the promo code almost 30 at checkout so that's perfectketocom slash almost 30 p-e-r-f-e-c-t K-E-T-O dot com slash almost 30 and enter the promo code almost 30 at checkout to get 27% off. So with that many shoes, I mean, that's so many shoes. Did you have to go to other villages <laughs> outside of our, the Argentinian village that you were at? Or how do you find places for all these shoes? Or are shoes? they still making them all? Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. We, I mean, literally. So we give in like 73 countries. We actually give a million shoes a year in the United States. So a lot of people don't realize that there's unfortunately a tremendous amount of poverty um, on Native American reservations in our country, in different parts of of West Virginia, different parts of Tennessee. I mean, it is is unfortunate the level of poverty that we still have in our country. So we give a million shoes a year in the United States, mainly shoes for kids to play. So that's always a, a thing is like giving them like a cross trainer or something that is supports their feet so that they can develop and play because also obesity is such a big problem in our country. So the more that they're playing, the more that they have footwear to help with that. Um, but but yeah, we give in every country in the world. Basically, I mean, I think seventy eight countries. You know, we do a lot of school shoes in India for school. You know, for kids to go to school. We do cold weather boots in Mongolia. I mean, you know, it's it's pretty. I mean, there's really not a place that doesn't get touched by Tom's shoes, whether you buy them or you're getting them. As a, as as a as a recipient, so it's still today. I, I pinch myself, and I just can't believe that like this has all happened in the last in the last twelve years. The model itself is really simple, and I think that's the most beautiful part about it. You know, you didn't overcomplicate things. Like as you see, you know, up and coming entrepreneurs and them possibly complicating the process. What has been like your observation and like? kind of a message or solution for those who are up and coming? Because I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are, you know, starting their own brand or business, whatever it is. And I think there's an overthinking element to it that that stops them from making an impact like you're making. Sure. I mean, I'll address that question in two things because it's, it's really relevant also to where we are as a brand today. So... The truth of the matter is, is that, yes, if you can build a simple model like that, it's really effective in getting your message out, allowing people to connect to it um, and allow people to share the story. And so I always say like there's, you know, there's two things you really got to focus on as an entrepreneur, especially if you're engaging a social topic. And that is one, you got to be really, really passionate about what you're doing because being an entrepreneur is lonely. It's hard. Most businesses fail. Like if it's just like something that you feel like is, you know, a marketing gimmick because you've seen companies like Tom's be successful by having a cause, it will never work. So you got to deeply, deeply care about what you're building your business on, what cause, if you are connecting a cause, uh, is to it. The second thing is, is it needs to be as simple to understand and to share as possible because we do have short attention spans these days. But, you know, since you brought this up, you know, one of the things that has been the biggest personal challenge for me and for Tom's really the last four years is that, 
even though our model has been emulated by hundreds or thousands of businesses now, one for one, and it is very simple, it doesn't mean that it will be effective forever. And what I mean by that is after the first seven or eight years and all of these shoes we've sold and given, there has been a diminishing connection to when you buy a pair of Toms, you're helping a child in need because they've just heard the story so much. And so even though it's simple and even though we're still doing it, it's not driving our sales the way it once did. Our sales mm-hmm. have basically been flat the past four years. And so no growth at all. And, and now we're still helping a ton of people and we're still developing great shoes. But you know, as a brand, you need to be growing. You know, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so it's been really challenging for us to realize that this simple elegance that we created with one-for-one shoes while it's great and it helps a lot of people, it has not had the same impact on our business that it did in the first, say, seven or eight years. And so we've been like talking for like a year or two now on how do we evolve our giving model to actually use these tens of millions of dollars we use every year to make a bigger impact in other issues of our time and other things that we believe are really connected to what our customers care about. And so we've been talking and talking and talking about this literally for like 18 months to the point where I was almost just kind of giving up that we would ever actually do anything up until recently when, you know, we decided to make a major stand to end gun violence in our country. And so that to most people seemed like a total 180, like, where did this come from? Like, this makes no, no, you know, maybe this doesn't make any sense for Tom's who I know to give shoes now is entering you know, trying to get a law passed that will keep bad people from buying guns and make our schools and our community safer. But really, even though it was a very spontaneous decision that came after a shooting happened close to my home in Los Angeles, it was the seed was being planted for the past couple of years. So we are an activist brand. And when we're at our best, we emotionally connect with people on an issue that they care about. And we need to be able to take some risk and do things differently so that we can really engage their attention so that when they buy a pair of shoes, they are proudly wearing those shoes, not just because they know that a child got a pair, but because they know it's really helping drive something forward that, that they really care about. And so that's what's been happening the last 10 weeks. And it's kind of totally turned our business and even my own personal life upside down. But I'm really proud that we took that stand. Yeah, I agree. And I want to really dig into that because that is um, really important to us too. We're, we're here in LA. So there has been a lot going on in the gun violence space that I'd love mm-hmm. to explore. But I do want to ask, you know, for companies, what is holding them back from implementing a model like the one for one or taking a stand? Um, you know, Nike did recently with the Colin Kaepernick thing. And I think people are starting to really take note from Dove and um, even Gillette kind of taking a stand recently. But what do you think it keeps them from actually having a voice um, that can make a difference like you have? I mean, I think part of it is, is most companies don't have, if they're a, a legacy company, they've been around for a while, they don't have the credibility, I think, to take a stand, you know, because a lot of t- times it could backfire, right? I mean, you know, there's mixed reviews, I think, on whether the Gillette thing is going to be, you know, productive or not for their business. Because if you're a brand that was built on just, you know, selling a widget and then all of a sudden you take a stand and it's not authentically connected to the values of your CEO or the way your corporate culture is and just feels like something the marketing group picked up, then I think it can actually have a negative impact. Now, I don't think there's anything from keeping entrepreneurs from taking a stand and building a giving model into their business. Like I think that's the future of business. And I think that's the future of connecting with millennials and really having an engaged consumer base. So I would say every business that's starting now, there's like, I think it's actually a disadvantage to you to not have a, a perspective or a social mission connected to your business. Now, it might not be as radical as giving something away every time you sell something, because there are very few businesses that have the margin that can do that. But I do think that it's important. But I think for these more legacy companies, I think they have to tread very lightly. And some of them, like Dove is a great example, that they have done it in an authentic way. And they are living and breathing it from the executive levels down. And I think it can work. Um, and I think with Nike, it worked because you know they were able to you know, say, like we support athletes first. 
Um, and that's what we always have done. And we're supporting an athlete that we think, uh, you know, that we believe in. So, um, but I, I think that more companies will do it. I think there'll also be more disasters when companies do it poorly um, and don't authentically have the right to do it. Um, but it's also kind of why I felt like a lot of people internally at Tom's, including my board and our CEO, were like, I don't know if we have the authenticity to enter the gun violence space. This is like a heavy, heavy space where there's you know tens of millions of dollars spent by nonprofits and and this and that and 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 even though we felt connected to it after the Thousand Oaks shooting, which was close to my son's you know school, um, it's not like we were victims of gun violence ourselves. And so there was a lot of question. And what my answer was is I was like, if anyone has the uh, authority or the permission to take a stand on any issue that's going to make it better tomorrow is Tom's because that's why we started the company. And from day one, we have been using everyone's purchase to make a difference and be part of the solution, whether it's shoelessness or with our sunglasses we sell, helping people get cataract surgeries. So now if we make the largest contribution in the history of the United States, which we did to end gun violence, it is our way of saying like we are in the activism business. We are in the take a stand business. We always have been and we always will be. And if you and the, and the only way we can do that is if you buy our shoes. Like we're also like really transparent and open about like like we need you to buy our shoes. Like if you're listening to this podcast right now mm-hmm. and you're like inspired, like and you say, what do I do? I'd say, well two things. Go to Tom's.com and send a postcard to your representative to you know help them in gun, you know urge them to to end gun violence. And two, buy Tom's and wear them and wear them and tell the story because the only way we can continue to take stands on things that we really matter to us and to our customers is it's all funded by the sale of our shoes. And I think that transparency in talking about that is something that other companies also don't do. They kind of try to like trick you into buying their product because they make you feel good about something they're doing, but they don't really hit it head on like we do. Mm. So as the giving model evolves and you are giving to causes that are, you know, working for um, the most important issues of this time, what other ways are you looking in 2019 and beyond to give what other causes? There's so many right now. Yeah, yeah, so many. I mean, like, I, you know, there, there are ones that I personally have interest in. I mean, teen suicide is one. Bullying is one. A climate change is one. I mean, there is a long list I have personally. But, you know, what I think is most important and what I've always tried to do is, you know, really understand what our customers care about because ultimately it's their dollars that are they're allowing us to do this. And so we're getting ready to launch a big campaign called Stand for Tomorrow that we're going to, you're going to start seeing at all the stores that sell Tom's and on our website where we actually list like, eight things that we could do next year with another $5 million and let our community help us decide what we should do next. Cause we're going to take another big stand, you know, in the beginning of 2020. Um, and, but we think that rather than us just deciding, you know, based on an event that happens now, we really want to engage our community more and have them be involved in the next stand that we take. I have ideas for 2020. Great. <laughs> yeah, I have a few. Um, yeah, that's interesting about the community because for you know almost 30 for our community, the having the input and the conversation with them to hear from them who they want to hear from, who they want us to engage with, has been you know instrumental in our not only our growth but the growth of everyone that's involved. So that's like one of the most beautiful things that you know I think you're doing, and we try to emulate as well. Um, for a lot of, so for a lot of the listeners, they are female founders. They have businesses that are mostly in like the professional services space. So they're online. Um, they're not necessarily product focused. So what could a small business owner who is in the services space, maybe they're digital, maybe they're doing copy, maybe they're doing social media. How could they apply a giving back model to their business? That makes sense. Yeah. I think one of the great things that we have now especially small business owners and is we all have a, a, a massive megaphone via social media, by our email list, by our customers, right? Like that just didn't exist 10 years ago. Like now, I mean, any one of us, even if you have 500 followers, you have 500 people that you could technically get a message to tomorrow. 
And so we all can be activists and we can use our businesses um, and our and our community to um, raise attention to the things that we care the most about. So that might be like, I don't know, you're really passionate about helping people get clean access to clean water. And so you do a partnership with Charity Water so that, you know, for your company's anniversary, you're asking everyone to donate it's your 10th anniversary of your business or 50th anniversary, everyone donate $5, you know, to Charity Water and let's see how much we can raise together. And then that money is raised and then they get to celebrate, look, we helped build this well, you know, like it's, it's, it's those types of things that it can be very much tied to, you know, uh, you know, something you're doing that season, an anniversary for your business. Um, it could be something that, you know, is, is offered like with new clients. Like when you come on as a client, you know, we do X. I mean, I think it, once again, it has to be connected to your personal passion. So I can't really be prescriptive in that. But whatever you're passionate about, there is a way to engage your community, your customers, your clients. And have them know that you're not just in business for profit, but you also want to use your business, even if it's a small part of your business, to drive a social change. And I think that's that's something that people respect. It helps create lo- uh, loyalty among your customers and your clients. And it also just makes being in business more meaningful. Like at the end of the day, like you know, we do all have basic needs that we need to you know create an income and have. But you know, I think that everyone that I know when I really have deep conversations with them about, you know, like why are we here on the planet? Then, you know, it's this idea that we're kind of all here for one another and whatever our skill sets are, whatever, you know, opportunities we have, we can help use those to make other people's lives just a little bit better. It it makes our life a lot better. Mm. Agreed. What's most challenging about, you know, leading a movement like this? (laughs) I, I think the hardest thing is is keeping it fresh. I realized, you know, I wouldn't have known that, frankly, six months ago. Like, I think we were just kind of coasting at Tom's. You know, it's a, you know, you know, you know, we do very well. We help lots of people. Like, our staff is highly engaged, and we're just coasting. And and you know, we, we, the, the truth is, the last three years or four years, I don't think we were a movement. I think we were just a great shoe company that did a lot of good. And and so after making this very bold and provocative, you know, um, campaign in gun violence and creating the technology on the website so that people could, you know, send a postcard to the representative. I mean, now we've had 740,000 Americans have sent postcards. Oh I mean, that's a huge number. And most of them are not Tom's customers. I mean, they literally are people that heard about it on the Jimmy Fallon show or saw a celebrity tweet about it or whatever. But 740,000 people have taken the time to go to a shoe company website to write a postcard that we are sending to the representative to urge them to pass universal background checks. And so now we're definitely a movement again. You know, I mean, there's no, there's no doubt about it. We're in the movement business. But I think to answer your question, the hardest thing is, is like we were a movement and it just got stale and, and we, you know, just kind of lost the cultivating of the community um, up until this recent um, experience. And I think now that we've been kind of uh, woke back up to this and realized that Tom's is at its best when we are being, you know, really bold and provocative and activist and, and, and leading a movement, not just selling shoes, we actually sell more shoes. <laughs> so um, it, it actually works. So then it allows us to do more things. So I hopefully we won't lose sight of that again, but that was definitely the thing that I've learned a lot the last, you know, the last uh, couple months. Yeah, it's hard. It's like yeah, with our the way society is today, it's such a beautiful thing that we move on. But it's also like, you know, with gun violence, it's, you know, there have been so many shootings. So it's kind of like all the energy is to that space to kind of work against that and kind of change that. So um, the freshness also comes with like for you, the permission now. It's like, okay, now I have the permission to kind of go for yeah. it and to be provocative again and to kind of really take a stand and kind of evolve the company back to being the activist at this point in time where it's like the perfect place for it. So we grew up in Texas, but did so because, you know, guns in Texas and then here. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm a gun owner. Like, I yeah, have well, so what is gun. that? What's that? I guess. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. And then with the gun violence, like what's the actual goal with your movement? Sure. Yeah. So so I am 100 percent like massive supporter of the second amendment right to bear arms hunting like 
there is there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. I think that's a huge part of our culture. I you know I mean, it, but what 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 I have zero tolerance for is the fact that this year we had more school shootings than ever in the history of the United States. You know, as a, as having as a father you know, as a four year old and a one year old. And I have zero tolerance for the fact that you can be a felon and you can get out of jail tomorrow. And then the next day you can go buy five AK 47s and you can buy five every single day, or you can be on the suspected terrorist watch list and still go buy a gun at a gun show. I mean, this is crazy. (laughs) Like it doesn't make any sense. So the reason why I, you know, got so engaged in this debate and in funding so much of this work and getting people to send postcards is there is something called a universal background check. It is very simple. It keeps three groups of people from buying guns. Felons, those are known to have a history of domestic abuse, um, and then those who are mentally unstable. And, and so if you're one of those people today, you can be a domestic abuser. You can literally have been arrested or, you know, if for domestic abuse, and you can go buy a handgun. And fortunately, that's how, you know, a lot of uh, gun violence deaths happen. Um, and it's usually females um, because, you know, they, they suffer from this domestic abuse. And, and it ultimately ends in, in their partner shooting. I mean, it's really sad. And it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy that we allow these people to buy guns. So you can be the biggest hunter, the biggest gun advocate in the world. And still totally support the idea that these people shouldn't buy guns. And if we pass universal background checks, which will be voted on here in the next 60 days. So this is like right now, this is happening. It's it's literally on the House floor. I mean, as soon as the government gets running again, like this will be voted, you know, and, and this will save, you know, tens of thousands of lives. I mean, it's that simple. So, so the reason why I felt so strongly that we could get into this you know, discussion and have a difference as a business is we are a company that has customers that are all different political beliefs, all different states in the country, red states, blue states, purple states. And I just don't think this is a political issue anymore. I think it is a human issue. And I think we all can agree. And actually 90% of Americans have been polled agree on universal background checks. So it is a very, very large majority of people have the common sense to say, like these people should not be able to buy guns. And if we pass this federal law, they would no longer be able to do it. Today, they can buy them online, for God's sakes. I mean, that is like, there's no checks and balances. So, so that's what we're about. We're, we're not about gun control. We're 100% about you can be a responsible gun owner, but we literally have to stop these people from buying guns. And the only way to do so is with a mandatory federal universal background check. And so that's what if you go to toms.com and you send a postcard, that's what the postcard is for. It's to your representative. It's saying, I want to make our country safer by passing universal background checks. Please vote for this when it comes up for a vote on the House. And, you know, 750,000 people have done it. And now the fun thing is, is, yeah, even since we decided to have this conversation today, we've decided that we're going to hand deliver postcards to Congress on February 5th. So if you're listening to this and you live near Washington, D.C., or you want to take a road trip, um, you can come join us. It's going to start at 9 a.m. on the steps of Congress. We have a couple of our kind of famous friends that are going to do some entertainment before. We're going to have a rally. And then we're literally going to go hand deliver probably 800,000 postcards (laughs) to Congress. And it is going to be a ruckus. Um, It is going to be a lot of fun. So you can RSVP to save your spot if you want to come on Tom's as well. Um, but it, I think it's going to be really fun. Well, well, that's incredible. And we'll post the link in our secret Facebook group. So we'll add 10,000 more. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> there. All- no, that, I mean, that's incredible. Your teeth look so white. Thanks. <laughs> I can tell you how they look so white. What you've been doing, girl? My coconut toothpaste from Kapari. It honestly works. I had someone message me the other day and be like, does that really work for whitening? 1000 mm-hmm. percent it's like oil pulling and crispy fresh and natural natural and just taste amazing it's just i mean kopari never ceases to amaze me that they blow every product that they do out of the water out of the uh, water yeah they they source their coconuts from the philippines you can trust them it's ethically sourced they go to where they source their stuff like it 
matters to them. They are so passionate. Gigi was on the podcast, but like, even just when you meet her, you know, you're like, I trust you. I oh trust this brand. Trust them with my lives. And everyone that works there really loves their job. They love what they do. They love the company. So you can like feel the love and see the love in all of their products. They take a long, long time to bring things to market. This toothpaste took a long time for testing so they could get it really, really perfect. And it is. Yeah, it's so good. They also have the um, charcoal toothpaste as well. So the charcoal is kind of an added extra that captures toxins um, that might cause bad breath or teeth staining. I love that. I do that kind of every other day. And it's just delicious. So you can find the toothpaste, the new toothpaste, the oil pullers, and so much more at kaparibeauty.com. You can use our code almost30 for 15% off your first order. So that's kaparibeauty.com, K-O-P-A-R-I beauty.com. Use our code almost30 for 15% off. We're growing the team here at almost30, which means that we have to tighten up our processes. Yeah. And onboard the new team to HoneyBook. Mm-hmm. Help them so easy. figure out the process, which is very, very easy. Um, but basically HoneyBook streamlines and automates the client's experience and then also streamlines and automates the experience internally from the original email to all the invoicing, everything like that. So basically we manage our business with HoneyBook. Yeah. So HoneyBook is great for you know solo entrepreneurs, especially if you're handling a lot of the day-to-day nitty-gritty details with invoicing, payments, scheduling, you know, everything. So as Krista said, it just automates it. It makes your life so much easier. It will save you hundreds, if not thousands of hours a year by just streamlining your client process. So if you'd like to try HoneyBook, you can get the first year for 50% off by going to honeybook.com and using the promo code ALMOST30. So that's 50, 50% off the first year of HoneyBook by going to honeybook.com and using the promo code ALMOST30. Yeah, I just, I, I, I guess I'm thinking too about what role your faith has played in all of this, in building a business, in, you know, kind of being so um, bold and brave, like as you you try to combat these issues of our time. Um, I know you're a father of two and a husband and all of that. So your faith and the fact that you're a father and a husband, I'm sure has changed you as an entrepreneur. Oh, hugely. I mean, I think starting Tom's in the first place uh, and having a desire to use business to help those in need, you know, basically came from my faith and my upbringing and lessons in Sunday school and, and this idea that, you know, those who have been given a lot also have a big responsibility. And so, um, you know, and one of the things that was so great is in the early days of Tom's, it was really easy for me to share, you know, how my faith was really driving you know, the business decisions we were making and how other people could really connect to use, you know, kind of living their faith in action by the types of products that they purchase. Because ultimately, when you buy a product, you're voting for that company and you want to be shared values. And so that was a huge part of our business. And, you know, I used to, I used to speak at churches and synagogues and all different, all different faith groups. And then, you know, at some point, like everyone had heard the Tom story. So it kind of goes back to the, how do you keep it fresh situation? And it wasn't as, it wasn't as, you know, knew of an example for a pastor or a rabbi to share. But what has been great about the ending gun violence again is it has allowed me a platform to really talk about my faith and how all members of all faiths really should have a shared responsibility in ending this gun violence epidemic. You know, because these shootings are happening in churches and they're happening in synagogues and they're happening in mosques. And, you know, a friend of mine says bullets do not discriminate. Um, and I think that is a really, really good saying. And so it has helped me reconnect with faith leaders from across the country and the world and say, guys, like this is all of our responsibility. This is on our watch. And this is not the country I think we want to live in. So we can't let the politicians tell us this is a political thing, which then becomes, you know, it, it gets seeps into the church. Um, this is not political. This is human. And this is about um, saving lives and having compassion. And so that's been really encouraging. I've gotten some really great response. I've 
I've, I've spoken at a few churches and done a few really great podcasts um, where we've been able to d- dive deep into that. Um, but it definitely, it definitely is one of the big things that motivates me. Yeah, especially the gun control, having a child, you know, in school. Yeah. I can't, I, it's, it's such a weird thing to think about, you know, to, to think back to when we were in school and to ever imagine that we would have to worry in that way. I mean, I'll never forget Columbine. That was such a huge deal and that was yeah. life-changing and that was uh, something we thought would never happen again. And that was something that was so impactful, you know, for our generation and to know, um, or to see that it's happening so much now and to think that I would have children, you know, that wouldn't be safe in um, our schools is terrible. So i um, very grateful for that work. I heard a statistic the other day that was motivating and shocking at the same time. For the, this year in the, in the uh, U.S. public school system was the first time that they actually had more lockdown drills than fire drills. Like, I never had a lockdown drill when I was yeah, in same. school. Nope. Uh, we had lots of fire drills, you know, but they had more lockdown drills than fire drills. So that just shows this yeah. is an epidemic. Like, this is not. And the thing is, is now it's happening so frequently that there's many shootings. I mean, there are 320 mass shootings this year. And I bet you only probably heard of maybe five or 10 of them, yeah. you know, because the media just doesn't have the space to report yeah. them all. So it's, it really is, a, 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 you know, a state of emergency, and that's why you know we're putting you know so much energy behind it. And and look, I'm someone who is not an activist for an activist's sake, but I only really feel like it's worth putting money and time behind things if you can have a solution. And the great thing is, is that there really is an imminent, at least not it's not a solution. It's not going to solve all gun violence. It's not going to solve. There's still going to be mass shootings next year. But it, it definitely can decrease it pretty substantially um, if we just make sure we know who's buying guns. Mm. What is, I guess, then on that point, what is the conversation you have with your four-year-old? You know, do you do you speak to this? Like, how do you kind of have a conversation about something like this? You know, it's interesting. I uh, I think he's just a little too, he's probably a year or two too young mm-hmm. to really understand. And I came back for Thanksgiving after doing the Jimmy Fallon show. I did it literally the week before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And my, my son thought it was fun that I was on TV. So he got that right. And so, but but he didn't, I was trying to explain to him that I was on there to try to help keep people safe and the the bad people wouldn't do things with guns and he didn't get it. Um, but, uh, but it was really cute. My nephew who's seven, I said, you know, cause I was also said, you know, I, I taught my, I taught my nephew, I said, there is a word called inconvenient and you're going to learn about inconvenient this Thanksgiving because you guys came from Utah to be with us for Thanksgiving. And normally I'm very present at these holidays, but I'm going to be on a lot of phone calls. I'm going to be doing a lot of work. I'm going to be on my phone a lot and it's inconvenient that I have to be there, but I am doing this because I'm trying to help people. And here, and I showed him the Jimmy Fallon show and he's seven. And he was so cute. He says, oh, I understand. I like to help bunnies. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, I put up flyers because there were some bunnies that got out and helped people find their bunnies. And I was like, exactly. okay. And I said to him, I said, so like, if you had to do that on your dad's birthday, that would have been inconvenient. And he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, he's so. like, I don't know what the bunnies are doing. He's like, that's so funny. That's the thing with kids. It's like, you could try, you know, you. it's like, I think as a parent, you probably are thinking in your head like a hundred scenarios. You're like, okay, how am I going to say this? What's the best way? You know, I want to make sure that I'm being very thoughtful with my words and then they're like, I help bunnies. And you're like, it. got it. <laughs> yeah, you're like, sweet. But he got it. <laughs> but they do. They, they're like a sponge. So he might not fully understand but I'm very convinced that the decisions that we make as parents, whether it's right now or it's, you know, because everything will always be on Google. When they Google me five years or 10 years from now, uh, these things will have an impact on who they become and, and, and their values. So it is For important. sure. Of yeah. course. Last question from me. As entrepreneurs, I mean, Krista and I have just realized the value, especially in the last year of taking care of ourselves as yeah. we grow the business and as we serve our community. 
So I would love to know, you know, what you do to take care of yourself on the day to day. I mean, I can imagine you're traveling like crazy and you're meeting a million people all the time and, and yeah. having to give, give. So I'd love to know what you're doing on a daily basis. Uh, first thing is I, I really am focused on sleep. Um, so I feel that that is something that is absolutely critical and it's not just about being in the bed for eight hours, but it's like the two or three hours in preparation for when you go to sleep. So, um, you know, one thing I've stopped doing is having any alcohol for a couple hours before I go to bed. I feel like, you know, that's, that's a, it's a slippery slope to get into, especially if you're traveling a lot and you're hosting people for dinners and this and that, like, you know, if I'm going to have some drinks, I'll have them more in the middle of the day. Um, because alcohol has a really negative effect on your sleep. Uh, the other thing is, is I make sure the room is really dark. Uh, I make sure it's cold enough. Um, my wife and I fight about that a lot. Um, <laughs> it's too cold. Um, but, but I, but in all seriousness, like really protecting sleep and not like there's this sometimes just like, I feel like it's like almost like a badge for entrepreneurs of like, Oh, I only need five or six hours of sleep. Like that's totally bullshit. Like you really need at least eight hours of sleep. And it's really hard to be productive and clear if you're not getting sleep. And then the second thing is I really just try to make sure that I do some form of exercise for at least 30 minutes a day. So, you know, um, you can get so focused on your work and what you're doing and traveling. It's hard. And so, you know, trying to get that usually at the beginning of the day is the best time for me because then the rest of the day can be a little crazy. But yeah, but that those are the two things. Um, it's actually interesting. I'm actually developing. It's funny you asked this question. So um, I'm actually developing a, a new company before all the crazy craziness recently. I, I invest in a lot of startups. And um, one of my friends who is an ex-Navy SEAL, uh, he and I, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, started talking about what are the practices and habits of the highest performing people in the world. Not just like in the SEALs and entrepreneurs, but moms, like, you know, like who, who really is like living their best life and living their fullest life in a way where they're not like, you know, just zen out, but they're like doing stuff and they're busy, but yet they're still, you know, finding a way to kind of, you know, do the things that have the biggest impact. And so we're actually going to be launching it in May as a beta where um, it's basically every month we give you a box in which you'll focus on one thing for the month and mastering that one kind of lifestyle hack that will allow you to do everything else better. Um, so I would love to come back on the show when we launch yes, and done. talk through that. And, uh, and, and it's, it's really, really, I, I, we, we have literally the, the head of uh, neuroscientists from um, Stanford is on our team. The head of psychology from Harvard's on our team. who basically looked at the, you know, you know how these aff- things affect our mind, our body, our spirit. And it's been amazing. I mean, I, I honestly, I wouldn't be able to be doing as much as I'm doing right now, had I not developed this company for the past year, I had no idea that I was going to hit this crazy influx of, of work and stress and, and mission again. Um, but it's really helped me and, and it really kept me accountable to like staying balanced. And, and, and so, yeah, so definitely like, let's connect again, like in April, because we're going to be looking for about, I think 300 uh, people to do the beta. Um, we're so in. Maybe- Done. Yeah. Say no more. <laughs> I think for the box too, it'd be really cool, you know, because you're going to have all these people going through these boxes that are going to help them apply the one thing to their life to change. And it's going to, you know, kind of be like steps. They're going to kind of go through it. It'd be cool to have a community place, whether it's on Facebook or something where everyone can kind of connect and support one another and talk about everything that they're doing and mm-hmm. everything that they're going through just to make it so much more impactful and more tangible. Yeah, so we are. So one of the things that is really cool about it is we're actually having people um, sign up like they're in like a class, like a group, oh. like the like class of you know, your high school graduation class, right? And so as I said, we're going to take 300 people and they're going to be the very first beta class. And then and they'll have a private Facebook group and they'll have a private coach that will be assigned to that class to help them with specific things they might be working on and, you know, and whatnot. I can't, I, I, keep, I love that you're drinking water because hydration is one of the, the, the <laughs> critical things we say we say hydration is the one thing that allows your body to do everything so yes. so you know and, and we're actually as americans we're chronically dehydrated yes yes um but 
you're not, you're drinking water. It's great. But <laughs> anyway, so, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the way it's going to work is each group. So you won't be able to just sign up. It'll be a private sign up and it'll be invite only um, because we want to have like the first group of 300 people and test them and see how the results and get the feedback. And then we'll let another 500 people do it. And, we, you know, because we have a really long, long term vision for this of how this can, you know, ultimately help people from, you know, all this self-inflicted pain and suffering that they have, you know, and, and all the stuff that will ultimately, you know, get them to either have, you know, anything from, you know, being chronically dependent on antidepressants to, you know, obesity to, I mean, so it's, it's not just for, you know, people to optimize their life. It's actually to help create better baselines. So we never even get to those stages. So yeah, so you guys will definitely be in the beta group for sure. I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell Pat and Lindsay, my partners about this. <laughs> we uh, made it. Started. Yeah, um, that's amazing. And just a last thing on that too. It's almost like starting with the beta, having the 500. And then for us, something we think about a lot too, is like the access to things like these. So Lindsay and I have access to such great tools and resources and people like you, you know, that provide us with this information and insight. But it's almost like sometimes I think about the people in the middle of America or these other places that don't necessarily have this access to such amazing tools and resources that could really make such marked change on their life. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, I mean, we have a very, I'm excited to talk more about it. It's a very democratic approach of to course. basically giving this to anyone and everyone. Um, and our pricing model is actually kind of based on what you can afford. So different people will have wow. different pricing based on, yeah. Because our whole, our mission is, is that we really believe that we can eliminate, you know, unnecessary suffering um, and we can help people live their best lives through these very simple practices. So, and taught in a different way, because, you know, if, if you take a full month to learn something, you can actually instill it into a habit and a practice versus we're so scattered now. You might read some great tips, you know, yeah. on a website or here on a podcast, but you don't have the tools to help you implement it or the accountability and all these things. So. We spent, yeah, almost a year and a half now developing it. And so it's, it's interesting you asked about it because it's been a huge passion of mine. Oh, that's so exciting. Amazing. It's cool to see you when you're like super passionate about I stuff know. that you're talking about. It's exciting. Um, so February 5th is the rally in Washington, yep. D.C. Okay, cool. We'll make sure that our community knows about that. And then just as a last thing, do you, you have other tour dates leading up to that, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so on toms.com, um, I think it might have even launched today. If not, it launches tomorrow. There's kind of a micro site that'll be following the tour, following all the stops. Um, we'll be doing live on Instagram and live on Facebook for all the town halls we're hosting. And so it's going to be a really great journey the next couple of weeks. So exciting. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is really... Yeah, this cool. is really cool. It's exciting. We've been wanting to talk about this topic. So you were the perfect person. Um, hearing your story in in the real is incredible. Um, you are a light and what you're doing is changing the world. So thank you very much for being a part of our community and for working with us on this. And we're excited to talk to you again in April about the box. <laughs> Great. Awesome. We're all about that thank box. You. Thank you, Blake. Yes. Enjoy the snow. Bye, you're guys. The best. Bye. We'll see you soon. Oh, Blake. Amazing. <laughs> Blake, thank you so much for being such a present light, such an inspiration to all. I think you know it. But yeah, it's just crazy. I was telling Lindsay too, how quickly Blake manifests things, you mm -hmm. know, in his life, um, how quickly his businesses came to fruition. Uh, Tom's, now the gun violence rally, you know, building his business. It's just such an example of when you have a clear intention and you have a um, cause that is going to benefit more than others, you have a positive energy behind you things will happen very fast and things will happen in the right way. So what yes. a beautiful, beautiful story. We are excited to support um, all that they do in the future. Yeah. So. And again, go to toms.com. Um, you can send in 30 seconds using their new technology, a postcard to your representative to help pass universal background checks. And then on February 5th, they are dropping postcards off in Washington, D.C., to your representatives, it's going to be uh, incredible. They're going to have musical artists there, celebrities, tons of people. It's going to be incredible. So if you're in the area, please join them. All right. Love it. 
Let's do this, sis. Let's do this. Uh, favorite or not favorite <laughs> review of the week. <laughs> Sorry. We don't play favorites. Favorite podcast, five stars. One of my best friends turned me on to this podcast and I have been obsessed ever since. Krista and Lindsay are hilarious, intelligent, and real. This podcast covers interesting topics on holistic health, wellness, and personal development. They ask real relatable questions. They have created an amazing community of women supporting women. Their passion and drive have helped inspire me to create the life and career I want. Shout out to Krista and Lindsay for this beautiful community you have created. That I is mean, from honey. Almost 30 Fan. Oh, Almost 30 you. Fan? Cute. That's her name from birth. Oh my, yeah, literally. <laughs> her Almost 30 Fan. Almost 30 Fan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. We uh, read those reviews because we just want to shout you out and give you a huge thank you for the love. Um, it means so much to us. And what else? Any other announcements? Yeah. See you guys on February yeah. 9th, Alexandra Roxo event. That one's going to be sexy and juicy and fun. And I am all about tapping into my feminine this year as I live in my masculine for the most part of my day. Yeah. Um, most of my past lives. So. Yeah. yeah literally. Here we go. <laughs> uh, so she is the best. You can check out on Instagram. I love to follow her. It's going to be at Sage Wellness. We have great sponsors, Kopari, Hum, Further Food, Unbound, uh, Kalumi. We just have some amazing brands that are going to be supporting us. So we would love to spend the day with you. And then if you're interested in starting a podcast and monetizing your podcast and making money on your podcast, in marketing your podcast and growing your podcast, you can check out all the resources that we've created for you on yourpodcastpro.com. Y-O-U-R podcastpro.com. And we have templates, courses, everything you need to to do what you want to do on the pod. Mm -hmm. All right. Have a wonderful rest of your week. We love you. Join the secret Facebook group. We will be in there. We're always in there. And we'll see you soon. Yep. Love you guys. Bye.